Hey everybody and welcome to another Lispy episode. This is a kind of not long but like overdue episode. I've been reading like crazy because we had our winter break for my doctoral program at Sam Houston. So it has been really nice to read things that I actually want to read and not be pressured into reading textbooks or graphic novels and just be able to read things that I want. So this book is one that I've had on hold from the Austin Public Library for a hot minute. Um, and I put it on hold when I originally heard about it. And then I just kind of like had it waiting on my shelf. So I actually finished it the day that it was due back to the library. Um, it was something that at first I was like, eh, it's just another like friends to enemies trope book. It's just another like corny romance. But it ended up being so much more. Um, if you loved The Hate You Give, anything by Nick Stone, anything by Jason Reynolds, so worth your time. Um, this is a love-hate thing by Whitney Granderson. And I'm showing you, sorry, Grandison. Uh, I'm showing you from my phone because I read the ebook, you know how I do. Um, but you can see how the two main characters are on a bench and they're already like looking away from each other. Uh, it was so, so good. And it is a debut novel. And I have already done the Amazon follow on Whitney Grandison because this book was so, so good. Now, something I'm noticing that is in a lot of YA recently, and even in some middle grade books, um, and I've seen this in graphic novels too, where the characters are just a little more self-aware and like socially aware and just more eloquent than what I have seen in teens and tweens and students in general. So that was kind of my only thing where I'm like, eh, not quite realistic, but what I have also noticed in working in middle school and high school students is that some students and some kids and some teens and tweens are more socially aware and self-aware and eloquent. Um, and in the neighborhood where a lot of this story takes place is where those kinds of students would live. So I kind of had to play both sides and think like, yes, these are these are a little unrealistic for me, but it could be legit because when I was working at a very affluent school, um, high school, this is how the students spoke. And coming from a Title I background and working in lots of Title I schools, I was very aware of those differences. And so if you decide to read this, and I really think you should because it's so good, you're going to notice that. Um, straight off the back, how the kids talk. And you, it's it's so weird to think like, I didn't speak like this. Shit, I still don't speak like this very often. Um, but if this is where kids are going, and this is the area that the students and these kids live in, then can you tell that I've been ho doing homework all day just saying students and not kids? Um, if this is the background these kids have, then this is truly the way they speak. So it really reflects different neighborhoods. So our main characters are Tyson Trice, who is the boy, and he goes by Trice because he hates the name Tyson. And this is Nandy, and they truly come from two different worlds. So the story starts with Tyson, we're going to call him Trice because he hates the name Tyson, with Trice being shot. It's not a spoiler, it starts right off the bat that way. And what we find out is that Trice's father shot and killed his mom shot Trice, tried to kill him, and then killed himself all in their house. And what we find out is that they lived in this area called Lindenwood. And Trice constantly says, like, you live by the by the wood, you die by the wood, and that they don't expect to make it to 24 because of where they live. And Trice um, survives being shot. And but when he wakes up, he has horrible survivor's guilt because he feels like the whole reason that this happened was because he and his mom were trying to plan to leave. And Trice was trying to save his mom. So it it's very hard to read. And there were times when I did have to step away because his survivor's guilt is so heavy. And the way he talks about how much he loved his mom is so heavy and like you see how trice struggles with relationships with other people and with other adults because he says and he says it all the time he's afraid to love someone the way he loved his mom because he's afraid to let someone get that close to him and then they you know they either leave or they die or something doesn't work out for him so it's really hard to read trice's parts but 
to watch his character growth as the book goes on is just I, I I honestly think the character growth in this book, not just on Trice's side, but on Nandy's as well, is one of the most well done and beautiful to read and watch and follow books I've read. And I, I know I say it all the time where this is like one of the best books I've ever read, but it's true. There are so many awesome books coming out right now, but this one has such good character growth. And I would love to see this book in middle school, even high school, or sorry, in high school and even middle school libraries, because the growth that these two people see, even though they're from two different backgrounds is so cool. So anyway, we try, try, Trice gets shot and he gets sent to live with Nandy and her family because um, their families were friends when they were little and they haven't seen each other since they were seven and they're now 17. Now, Trice is coming from a very rough background, very rough neighborhood. And when he goes to live with Nandy, Nandy, and, and shout out to Whitney Grandison because she said she based the neighborhood off of the OC and oh, love the OC. Um, I got a fire stick for Christmas from Karina, aka Q the Librarian. And I've been watching the OC while I work and while I do homework just to have noise in the background. And oh, so nice. But um, shout out because if if you've never seen the OC, if, if you love the OC like I do, it is a very affluent neighborhood and area. Like the people are rich. They live in McMansions. Everybody has a pool. It's It's insane. And so Trice has a huge culture shock going from this super rough background to this and Nandy straight off the back is like no I don't want him he's a thug he's been in jail but she doesn't know his full story and as you know YA books do they they obviously have a um enemies to lovers story and it's so good to watch them but not just them but the way that trice comes to interact with the whole neighborhood and who he chooses to make friends with and i think that that's important to note because he doesn't go for the popular crowd he doesn't go for the people that he thinks are gonna are gonna um help him he goes for the people that he feels are real and he wants to make friends with the people that not just are going to, you know, do something for him, but that he wants to be friends with and establish relationships with. But the constant thing that is happening to Trice is that he wants to go back and help his friends. He wants to see, you know, he wants to see how his friends are doing and he can't let go of Lindenwood. And his struggle through the whole story is that he can't let go. And Nandy constantly is trying to get him to let go because she tells him, if you don't let go of that part of you and you don't allow yourself to grow where you are, then you're never going to be able to move on. And I think that's really important. Um, I read a book over guilt um, for the Mav list and it was, I can't remember what it's called, but the, the author's mother dies and the graphic novel is kind of a, not a guilt survival guide, Oh, Dancing at the Pity Party. That's what it was. But it's about how there are no books about guilt and there are no books about how people feel this way. And I think that this book is also important because you see how Trice lives with this guilt and how he tries to move through it and end up going backwards. And then he goes forwards and then he goes backwards. So I think it's a really important book. Uh, it's also really good. It's a great, great story. And I can't wait to see more people read it. So Again, that was A Love-Hate Thing by Whitney Grandison. So, so good. Check it out wherever you can. Bye!